Now, looking at the pond, we see the first story there. Domestic airlines ask courts to terminate the federal government and Ethiopian deal. And that can be seen on page two, in case you're wondering why. And also, Air Peace, Asman Airlines, seek withdrawal of Nigerian air license. AGF Malami, Ethiopian Airlines, Sirika, Nigerian Air, listed as defendants. And also, if you look at the bottom and not so um, beneath, you see on page 12, uh, there's a debate there. Presidential candidates lambast the federal government for corruption and insecurity. <laughs> well, interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Let's see what happens in 2023 if they will do better. And also, at the top, we see on page 20, on page 17, rising inflation drives consumption spending to 5 trillion naira in Nigeria. That's a lot of money. A 57 trillion naira, rather. That's a lot of money. And also, we see page 8, uh, COVID-19 offered 371,000 100 Nigerian children. That is really sad. I mean, all this number of children orphaned by the COVID-19, and that can be seen on page 8. And also in finance, you see that CBN releases 3.5 billion US dollars for foreign education under Buhari's regime, and that's on page 17. Then looking beneath, you see why Nigeria may top cholera cases worldwide again according to the NCDC DG on page three. I mean, we can already guess what the reason is. We have been, um, Nigeria has been suffering a lot of flooding lately, and then it's really risky because we're looking at uh, an outbreak of this disease once again. And um, on page 30, we see flood affected 3.2 million Nigerians, 1.4 million displaced, according to the United Nations. And on page five, a missing businesswoman found killed by Lagos One Chance robbers. What a oh, sad that's a story. That's a very sad story. Really, really sad story. I mean, this One Chance case in Nigeria is really getting out of hand. And uh, lastly, on the Ponj, Celestial Church sacks guard and apologizing for attacking a Ponj aid. So we'll see that on page five on the Ponch newspaper. That's all we can take for the Ponch this morning. All right, let's still stay in Nigeria by looking at this Nigeria. On the front page, National Assembly renovation. Senate seeks variation of 30 billion Naira contract sum. Says money not enough to complete project as contractors blame Naira fall for slow pace of work. Nigerians are usually not excited when we're hearing that there's a renovation of a project by the Senate, you know, it's, it's just reeks. There's a lot of distrust between the government and the government. So yeah. what we see is that the moment they, they hear that they are renovating, they're, they're thinking it's our taxpayers' money. And, and it's because of the lack of really accountability, used. yeah, over yeah. here. So this is what's going on. But of course, we've been seeing the rise and the fall of the Naira. And they're saying it's affecting the slow pace of work. Or Joe bows out as National Assembly, Assembly gets new clerk today. The details of that's on page four. And on page two, Buhari Oshomole Obi to unveil landmark projects in Weavers. We can see a photograph here. It's a photograph of Inspector General of Poli uh, Police, Al Kari Baba, welcoming President Muhammad Buhari at the Namdi Azikiwe Airport, Abuja, after a two week medical checkup in the United Kingdom yesterday. Mm. Okay, moving on. Tinovo's drug allegation, we shall institute legal action against Libellus Publications, says APC. Of course, there have been publications that have been making the waves in the past few days about uh, Tinubu's alleged uh, affiliation uh, with, some, with drugs. And they've come out to debunk this and they have blamed opposition party, saying that they're the ones sponsoring these rumors as well. Serap tasks federal government to attack or to arrest, rather, sponsors of INEC office attack threatens legal action. We took the story about the INEC attack last week, the INEC offices that were both attacked, and um, the number over 60,000 voters registers burnt in the attack. Final story this morning on This Nigeria on page 20. Amcon recovers 307 billion naira debt in two years. That's what we could take this morning. Let's head out to Kenya. Now, looking at Kenya, we see that William Ruto is definitely not resting on his horses. We see man on a mission and uh, Ruto's 126 meetings in 60 days. That means in just 60 days, he has attended 126 meetings. Although, I mean, we're not counting the meetings, we're counting the effects Whoa. of the meetings. But <laughs> according to this report, it says that he has only rested for six or five days. Now, President Ruto has held 126 publicized meetings in his 60 days in office posting as many as four meetings a day 
amid pressure to deliver on the many promises he made on the campaign trail. Now, a Nation Newsplex analysis shows that since his swearing-in on September 13, he has not been engaged on only five days. And we see this on page 6 and page 7. I mean, we, we, we like to see that he's actively involved in this. We don't know if it's the pressure pushing him to do all of this, but mm. it's a good thing to see that he is, he's actually a man on a mission. Then we see also from uh, Daily Nation that allies and advisories concur that Ruto is a workaholic who is excessively meticulous. Good to see that they are finally agreeing. I mean, I remember when he came into power, a lot of people were saying that he's not going to deliver on his promises. But now they're seeing that he's working hard to do that. And then um, we also see on page five, a PS nominee's lineup for vetting by members of parliament starting from today. And then uh, at the bottom of the newspaper, we see that no prison break as committee turns to modern security technology. That's a good thing to hear, seeing how there has been um, a series of prison breaks recorded in that um, area a long time ago. And also, according to the World Bank officials, they will ensure good use of climate funds. And this is coming from the COP27 meeting as well. And in sports, we see fans, trophy and teams start to arrive in Qatar ahead of football spectacle and that's all we can take on the daily nation for this morning all right now let's head to east africa as we look at what's happening on the daily monitoring near uganda on the front page why government is seeking two trillion shillings loan now we have broke government here as a subtitle the new government requests to potential private sector lenders in the world to advance it with uh, about 500 million uh, pounds or 500 yeah i can't see this clearly but yeah there is basically a request the government is seeking two trillion shillings that's what the loan that the government is seeking at the right side of the paper fight erupts over 270 billion shillings payout to ex-uptc staff and uh, other stories more rain this month weather experts say oh wow that's not looking good the world the continent has been seeing a lot of raining of course these are sub effects of climate change interestingly in nigeria it's not meant to rain in november the rainy season ends in october but yeah. there are rains in november and this will continue to happen until measures are put in place to reduce the the carbon emission and to sort of take us a few steps back because right now reports have it that we are spiraling into chaos as it seems now still on the front page of daily monitor panorama says what are Uganda's safety nets for girls in Gulf states? The details of that on page 28. And healthy living. Uganda making strides in the fight to eliminate sleeping sickness on page 16. When we're younger, they taught us that sleeping sickness was caused by a fly. Sister fly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can see a fly there, so maybe that's not so wrong after all. Final story. Okay, I'm going to take three more. Uh, head teacher flees after pupils are impregnated. I hope this head teacher is caught and brought to book and made to pay for his crimes unfortunate incident there makerere searching for new council members details on page six and the final story is one of a man who took the part of the scripture that says be fruitful and multiply quite literally you can see the headline says be fruitful and multiply but a major man with 12 wives 102 children now that is the man there he's wearing a blue shirt and he has 12 wives 102 children and 578 grandchildren is it safe to say that this is the father Abraham of Uganda? That's an interesting one. I, I don't know. I mean, in this day and age where people are struggling to you feed understand? I mean, one he, child. He looks like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, um, you know, profile him, but he looks like he will need some help and he's still multiplying and so, being So fruitful. the thing about having lots of children would be there, there are cultural cultural and religious undertones to having lots of children. There are people who believe that, of course, children are a gift from God. So the more they have, the merrier. There are other people who do not believe in the use of contraceptive. So these are some of the things that inhibit family planning. And then we see people having a lot of And children. I really hope that they are considering the financial implications as well. I, don't, I mean, I, there shouldn't be any problem with having a lot of children so long as you can You can provide, provide yeah. Them, that's, I think and that's they don't the then end up becoming a burden to other people. If you can cater to 500 wives and 2 million children, by all means, go ahead. But be sure that you can cater for them. You can give your children access to quality education, good food, and basically be a parent over them because what we have is lots of children parenting themselves. <music>